Hey guys, today I'm just going to do a quick video about a cool Beretta 92 variant that I have, and that is the Beretta Bellinium. And I'm not going to do a full-length review on this just because there's a million different videos about the Beretta 92 platform out there, but this one I think is pretty unique, and I get a lot of questions about it because I pull the gun out pretty frequently to use as a comparison gun when I'm doing my size discussions on my other review videos just because the Beretta 92 is a pretty common platform. A lot of people are familiar with it. So I pull this one out, and I almost always get a question with, from someone saying, what kind of Beretta is that, or what's up with that Beretta? So I just thought I would do a quick video about it, talk about sort of ownership impressions, and some of the go over some of the features with the gun. As far as the whole history of the Beretta 92 series and everything, I'm not going to touch that. That's what Wikipedia is for, a million other videos, but I will talk about this gun here. So like I said, this is the Beretta Bellinium, and I pulled it out in its case just because the case itself is kind of cool. Only 2,000 of these were made in the late 1990s, early 2000s. It was to commemorate the year 2000, of course. I'm not usually into commemorative guns, but in this case, I made an exception just because I think it looks neat. So the case is nice. You open it up, and then you have this nice blue velvet lined case. Um, I'll show you some of the stuff on the inside here in a minute. And here's the gun itself. As you can see, it is pretty much a Beretta 92. A thousand of these made it to the United States. The other thousand that were produced went overseas, or stayed overseas, I should say, since these were made in Italy. You know, they went to European markets and other places. So there are a thousand of them in the United States, so that makes them pretty rare. And that's why you don't really see too many of them. There's a lot of desirable features on this gun, though, which is part of the reason why I liked it. But I also just kind of like some of the design features on it, too. So while I've got it open, I'll show you the case, too, just because that's kind of interesting. You get two magazines. These are 10-rounders because, like I said, the gun came out in the late 90s, which was during the assault weapons ban in the United States. So you couldn't get the normal 15-rounders. Keep one of these out for later. And then the top half of the case is real nice also. It's got this, um, this logo here, which is kind of cool. It's sort of a looks like a cave drawing almost. It's very tribal looking. And then the really techno looking font there, which is what I kind of like. It makes the gun look very futuristic and matrixy or something. In this flap here, you get a nice uh, manual, very extensive manual, different languages, all that stuff. And then the warranty card. Honestly, I've never even opened this, but it's just generic stuff, you know. But that's what comes with the gun. And then this is a little cleaning kit. So, some kind of nice stuff in the case, and the case itself is actually built pretty well, too, and I like the uh, the blue velvet that's on the inside. So, moving back to the gun, when you first look at the gun, you might just assume that it's a stainless Beretta 92, but it is not actually. This is carbon steel, and it has a unique nickel alloy plating on it. And you can kind of see it there. It's just not really a, full, a pure stainless color. The slide does look stainless, but the, the frame itself is steel, but it's a nickel finish, which gives it a really nice finish, I think. And you can see there's some uh, even some color variation within the frame. Other features are it has a Brigadier slide, obviously, which is strengthened here just for added strength and durability. Very thick also. The gun is really nice and heavy. It weighs 48 ounces unloaded with a magazine in it because of the all steel construction. Every single piece of this pretty much is made out of steel. Other nice features are the frame mounted safety, which oh, that's one of the major gripes that people have about the Beretta 92 platform, is at least the 92 FSs which in the M9s, you know, and the other ones that are most common in the United States, are, is that frame-mounted, or the slide-mounted uh, safety and decocker. This is a frame-mounted safety, the way the gun was originally designed, which is easily the most preferred configuration for most people. Um, it has a single-action-only trigger, and the gun is unloaded, but uh, it has a single-action-only trigger, which is bad, I will just say that. It's very heavy. It's about seven pounds when I measured it, and, you know, a lot of the time, you would expect a single action only trigger in a unique premium gun like this to be pretty nice, but this one is real heavy. A lot of the time you feel like it's, it's on safe because it's so heavy. But seven pounds, not the best single action trigger. It's definitely not a match gun in that respect. Another interesting component of the gun are the unique slide serrations here, which have this kind of fish scale looking thing going on. They're pretty grippy. They actually, It's actually pretty decently designed. Uh, it's kind of maybe not my taste exactly, and I'm not sure it really meshes with the rest of the gun's design. It's Because uh, it, like I said, it does remind me of sort of like a fish scale but it's very nicely done, um, but I'm not really sure it really flows with the, the sort of techno look that the rest of the gun has going on. And if you can see it there, you know, this sort of pattern there just has sort of a sci-fi look to me, despite the caveman drawing. But, um, and that, that same pattern is repeated here on the magazine release, which is reversible. You can flip it over to the other side if you want. The grips are made out of carbon fiber, and they have this nice soft touch inlay going on in the center here which has a really pleasant feel in the hand, I think, and it kind of just keeps it from being too slick, I think. You can see this one's a little dinged up. And apparently these grip panels also, if you shoot the gun a lot, can start to warp and bend. 
Uh, I haven't shot this one a ton, probably just maybe a couple, 300 rounds, something like that. It does shoot pretty well, but one of my biggest complaints about the gun really is that with this frame-mounted safety and the design of the slide, if you have a nice high up grip, which is what I tend to have, this uh, cutout here on the slide, it just completely obliterates the skin on my thumb here. And like literally the first time I shot this gun, I had a nice high grip and I just wasn't thinking about it. And this slide goes back and it just tears up because it's sharp there. And I had a giant cut on my thumb right there. Kind of ruined the day for shooting, unfortunately. Um, so that's one of my problems with, the sh with shooting it. The other thing is just the, like other Beretta 92s, this barrel is not uh, locked to the frame very well or to the slide rather. You can see that it kind of wiggles in there. And that minute variance can really throw off accuracy at distance. And that's common to most Beretta 92s. You know, if you want to get absolute bullseye accuracy out to 50 yards, you pretty much have to modify the gun to keep that from wiggling like that. But, you know, at normal combat distances, it is an accurate gun. I've always liked the Beretta 92 platform. I shoot them really well, and I do shoot this one well, too. But for, as far as bullseye accuracy, this is not a matched bullseye gun. Trigger's too bad. The uh, That barrel slop there it prevents it from being a truly accurate gun at, at, at longer ranges. Of course, being 48 ounces, it's also very pleasant to shoot. If, as long as you're not tearing your thumb up with that slide. It's real heavy, soaks up the recoil very nicely. The grip checkering is extremely aggressive, almost too aggressive you might say. Um, it really does grab onto your hand well though. Uh, it doesn't really tear my hand up over time, but I could see someone who's sensitive to that sort of thing. I mean, one of my favorite guns is a USP, and a lot of people complain about those grip serrations, or the grip checkering as being too harsh, and I think this would be, this is even harsher than that. But it's very finely done. These aren't dinged up, this is just, that's just stuff that gets caught in all these little uh, checkers here. But the overall finishing of the gun is actually very nice. It's, it's very smooth, no burrs or anything like that. Build quality is good. When you pick the gun up, there's that, that weight and the build quality are really apparent, I think. And this is really a nicely put together gun by Beretta. Takedown is just like a normal 92, and I'll show you that real fast, just so, because people probably want to see what the insides of this thing looks like. So push the button on the other side, flip that down, and the slide comes off. Now you can see what's going on on the inside there. Again, it's not stainless. It's a nickel car nickel coated carbon steel. The sight on this one, by the way, has been replaced. This It doesn't normally come with this adjustable sight, but I do have the original sight with it, but this one is a, an aftermarket adjustable sight. The barrel is pretty cool looking. It's nice and thick. You know, nice components on the inside, all steel everything. I like how it says nine para on the top of the barrel there. And it goes back together just like a regular 92. Of course. So that's really all I wanted to say about this gun, just because, like I mentioned, that you know, if you want to look up the history of the 92 and all the different variants, that's, that information is out there and it's been done to death. But as far as the Beretta Bellinium, also frequently known as Billies by collectors, um, there's not a whole lot out there, but I just wanted to share my thoughts and ownership experience with the gun and point out some of these interesting features because you don't really see that in a lot of other Berettas. Every once in a while they do come out with a unique commemorative gun like the, the current one is a centennial and it's pretty much the same idea it's got sort of some designs going on in the slide and it's made out of all steel it's real heavy single action only frame mounted safety but these are really more designed as collector's pieces uh, as shooting guns they're not really the greatest just because that heavy trigger um, and, and I can't really do that high up grip like I like to have so for something like that you know you'd probably be better off looking at something like a Beretta Combat or even just a regular 92 and having someone fix it up for you so it's a cool gun. Uh, prices on these are pretty high just because of the collectability, and there's only 2,000 of them ever made, 1,000 in the United States. You're looking at probably about 2,500 for a used one, up to three grand maybe for one that's in mint condition, never been fired. This one has been shot, of course. And you know, I would almost say that if you have one of these, maybe shoot it a few times, but it's really not worth being a shooter gun just because it's just not that exceptional to shoot. It's kind of like a regular Beretta, only the, the trigger is not that great either. So that is the Beretta. Bellinium, pretty cool gun, at least it looks cool, and I love the feel of it also, just that heft and the ergonomics of the bread, I've always liked those too. So, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more review videos on cool guns like this.